Hey, Wuzzy Wafers, Riv here. Ever wonder why some species of animals are so common as fursonas, while some you hardly ever see? Well, so did I, so I thought it'd be a good topic for this week's video. I'm going to talk about why I think some are more common than others, and then highlight some really awesome fursonas of less common species. Thanks as always to our amazing patrons. Without them, we'd actually be losing money making content for you. If you'd like to support this channel, check out the link below. So, what are the most common fursona species, and why do we like them so much? I didn't do any extensive research on this, so this is totally not scientific, but these are the species I would guess are the most common. Canines, felines, raccoons, kangaroos, foxes, bears, rabbits, mustelids like otters and ferrets, ungulates like deer and caribou, then there are fictional species like dragons, protogens, Pokemon, video game based species, and the list goes on and on. Alright, let's start with canines and felines. Canines and felines are familiar to us. They live in our homes and they share our lives with us. They have unique personalities and very expressive faces. Their wild cousins like wolves, coyotes, lions, and tigers are beautiful, intelligent, and awe-inspiring animals. Canines and felines are also some of the most common species to be anthropomorphized in cartoons and books. Foxes, in their various varieties, may be the single most popular fursona species of all time. They're cute, fluffy, smart, and agile, and who wouldn't want to be all those things? Those things aside, I bet there's another reason why foxes are so popular. Maybe one of the most famous anthropomorphic Disney characters of all time? Yep, Robin Hood. Rabbits are another cute and familiar animal with a long history in anthropomorphic art and cartoons, so it's no big surprise they're popular. Raccoons are smart, can be silly and entertaining too. Bears can be powerful and intimidating, but also goofy and amusing. They, of course, also have quite the history in anthro animation. Mustelids are an interesting one here. They don't seem to have that much history in anthro animation, but otters, ferrets, weasels, stoats, and pine martens seem to have caught on as popular fursonas anyway. Maybe it's because of how playful they can be, or just their long body proportions and cute faces. Ungulates like deer, caribou, elk, and horses are perennial favorites too. And ungulate fursuits can be incredible to look at. These are noble and beautiful animals, and it's no surprise that people want to represent themselves as one. Not all species in this category are popular as fursonas, and we'll talk about some of them later on. Kangaroos are another very popular fursona. They seem to be by far the most popular of the animals from Australia, New Zealand, and Tasmania. Although you'd think they'd be hard to anthropomorphize, the right artists and fursuit makers can really do magic with them. Kangaroo sonas can be the perfect mix of something unique and different, but still familiar. And the last category of popular fursonas is the broadest one, fictional and fantasy species. Now these can range anywhere from hybrids to unique species like Dutch angel dragons, manikets, aladons, circles, and protogens to name a few. Also in these categories are species that aren't necessarily unique to the furry fandom like Pokemon, video game species, and mythical magical creatures like dragons and such. The appeal of fictional and fantasy species can come from the desire to be a little different than the mainstream. Being a part of a unique group of species owner, or just having a love for fantasy creatures. If you have a fictional or fantasy Sona, let me know in the comments why you chose it. Alright, now on to the next section where we talk about some species and whole categories of animals that never really quite hit the mainstream in terms of fursonas. If you have one of these fursonas, don't think I'm insulting you in any way by talking about why I think they aren't that common. I'd actually like to see a lot more of these. Obviously, there are a lot out there, so I'm just going to talk about some of them. Then I'm going to show some beautiful suits and artwork of some really unique fursonas. So the first category is one where it's kind of surprising there aren't more popular. Mice and rats. Mice and rats are some of the most common anthropomorphized cartoon animals out there, but you just don't see a whole lot of them as fursonas. My theory is that maybe the real life animals just get too much of a bad rap for coming into buildings uninvited and spreading diseases throughout human history. It's kind of sad, but I think we should have more mouse and rat fursonas. Another one that I think suffers from perceptions about the real-life animal is the skunk. 
Skunk fursonas are super cute and don't have to be stinky. Bats probably fall into this category too due to some people's irrational fear of them. Bats can make super awesome fursuits. Some of the rarely seen mammal fursona species can just be hard to anthropomorphize. Hippos, rhinos, giraffes, sloths, wombats, and really any mammal with odd proportions, especially those with wide bodies and short little legs. They're just hard to imagine standing upright unless you really mess around with the proportions. Imagine the logistics of wearing a giraffe fursuit. People do manage to make some really good bovine fursonas, although you'd think they'd have similar issues. You don't see too many small dog species either, probably due to the body proportions. Of course, I think some mammal species just aren't seen as cute enough by some people or maybe a little too unusual. I don't know. This might explain the lack of interest in a lot of the unique animals from Australia and the surrounding countries. I do know of at least one Tasmanian devil sona. I'm honestly kind of surprised by the lack of koalas in the fandom. You'd think they'd be more of a common thing, but the kangaroo seems to be the lord of the Australian animal fursona for now. I challenge you to find me a duck-billed platypus fursona. Next category of rarely seen fursona species, insects. They certainly do exist, in fact there's a term for them, bug sonas. You don't see a whole lot of them though, and that's a shame. I think the biggest problem is that people just don't think insects are cute enough. Making an insect into a cute fursona is all about the skill of an artist. People have some adorable bug sonas, and I'm going to show you an amazing one in just a bit. Moving on, we have fish, shellfish, snails, and slugs. While you may see some fish tails and fins on other fursonas like manikits, you generally don't see full-on fursonas of these type of animals at all. Like insects, they can be made into amazing fursuits with a little imagination and a skilled artist. They can be a little bit difficult to anthropomorphize, and there's a misperception that they can't be cute. I'm going to show you some amazing costumes of a snail and a shrimp at the end of the video, so stay tuned. I'm going to leave reptiles and amphibians out of this video because scalies are a unique subcategory of furries and they really deserve their own video. The last category I'll mention are primates. This is another group where it's just hard to believe they aren't better represented in the fandom. There are a decent amount of primate fursonas, but not that many. My theory is maybe they're just a little too much like our human selves to represent that escape or fantasy that some people want in a fursona. One of my good friends actually has a chimp fursona, and apparently the primate furries have a pretty tight little community where they all know each other. There are so many cool primates out there, and I'd really love to see more of them as fursonas. What do you think? Did I miss anything? Let me know what you think about underrepresented fursona creatures in the comments. All right, the first featured unique fursona is Clo Bumble, a bumblebee bug sona with an incredible fursuit. Check this out and tell me insects can't be adorable. Next up is Fluffsneck, a really unique take on a snake fursuit. Yeah, I know I said reptiles were another video, but I just had to show you this one. How about a shrimp sona? That's right, check out Fantastic the Mantis Shrimp. This is an incredible suit, one of the most unique ones I've ever seen. And finally, as promised, a snail fursona. I just love how they were able to creatively anthropomorphize a snail to make it so believable as a fursona. And the suit is super adorable. That's all for this week. Have yourself a great week, and big thanks to Opia Day for pointing me toward some of the awesome suits to show you. See you later! Mm -hmm.